So there are some times when uh, you will want to dynamically get some data and put it on your web page in a way that isn't um, after you click on a feature. So it might be something more global, something related to your entire data set. For example, if you see here in this straightforward example, I'm listing the number of crashes in this data set. It's a relatively limited data set. There are only 497 crashes here. Um, but that is not hard-coded in the HTML. We're getting it through JavaScript. We're asking, in this case, we're asking Cardo, how many crashes were there in this data set? It gives us the result. Then we put that result in the HTML. Let's look at that um, another example. So uh, this is something that I've worked on a little bit in the past. Uh, this is tracking raptors. And what you can see is um, you can see the raptors over time. You can see where they've where they've come from and where they've gone over time. And the y-axis on this chart is the latitude. Lower is further south, higher is further north, and each of these lines is one of the birds. The x-axis, as you can see, is time. In this case, this is hosted by Cardo, and in Cardo, you can say, um, give me the results of some SQL query. If you can think of an SQL query that will get you the latitude over time by bird, then you can ask it for that, and then you can turn that information into a chart such as this one. So we're going to start out on the simpler side with something like this, but keep in mind that you could use it for something more complex down the road. But let's start relatively simply. So as, as we'll usually do, I'm going to look first at the HTML. In this case, I have, um, I have a div. This is a sidebar uh, feature content. This is where um, data will end up. Uh, in this case, the comment isn't strictly accurate. Uh, it's really where the data will go for the whole map, not when clicked on, but once the page loads. If we look at the JavaScript, um, as we're mostly used to by this point, we're setting up Leaflet. We're setting up Cardo. We're adding source and style together here to get a layer, right? And the data set name in this case is NYPD Motor Vehicle Collisions. So how do you get the count of a all of the data in a table? Select count star from that table. I'm putting that in a string here, in this variable, just to split it out, just to make it a little bit easier to read, keeping the SQL separate here. Now I'm running a function that you might not be familiar with. It's called fetch. Fetch will fetch the data at a URL, and then you can use that data later on. And in this case, the URL is a little bit confusing. Um, what's going on here is I'm t starting the URL with this text, and then at the end of it, I'm adding the count SQL. So this is part of the Cardo SQL API. Cardo offers, um, this is an interface where by requesting a specific URL, 
you can actually get SQL out of your data sets. It's pretty handy. And um, before we go on to see how fetch does what it does, I'm going to just copy this part of the URL. Since it's a URL, it's something that I can just open in a browser. So I can just add the SQL to the end of this. And you will see that's the result I get. Most of this is not particularly useful. Um, the really important thing is 497. That's the count. But you see that it says, OK, it took us um, 0 0.041 seconds. It, um, the fields that are here, there's a numeric field called count, and there's only one row. Um, if you were curious, you can absolutely run other SQL. Maybe I would select star from MIP motor vehicle collisions so that I don't get too much information back. I'm going to add a limit five so that I only get five rows back. So now you can see, oh, there's a lot more data. Um, in, this, in this case, because I'm selecting star, I'm getting every column for all five of these rows. It's a lot of, a lot of information. You can imagine with 500 rows, it's even more. So, um, so that is the SQL API. If you can craft an SQL query that is valid and works, you can use it in this SQL API and get the data and do something with it. So the thing that I wanted to do is get that 497 out of the data and put it on the page. How do we do that? So um, after fetching, we need to parse the data as JSON. That's what these three lines do. With the SQL API, just assume that you're always going to do this after the fetch. Um, so if I was going to copy and paste this, I would actually copy and paste all of this and only change this then. So um, the way, the proper way to read this is fetch this URL, then parse the JSON, then do something with the result of parsing the JSON. And um, we don't need to know too much about what JSON is, but if you look at it here, um, hopefully it looks familiar to you. This is actually, it's a valid JavaScript object. JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. Um, so there's this curly brace that starts the object and a curly brace that ends it. And I can access rows, which is the one of the members of that object. And then from the rows, I can then access the, um, the first row. And then I can ask for the count from the first row. And that's what I'm doing here. But before we do that, let's open up developer tools and look at that. Because I'm console.logging something out. And I want to make sure that we see that. Great. So. When I console.log, we can ignore these yellow warnings. Uh, I can just turn those off. When I console.log, you will see an object with rows, zero, count. Right? So I'm <clears throat> the data comes to us. It's just text, as you can see in this browser tab. but JavaScript is parsing it into an object. And then you can use it as any object. So um, I can store that in a variable. And now it's called temp0. This is purely for demonstration purposes. I can say temp0 dot and get things out of that object. So what if I got the rows? Now I have an array of length one. I can get the first element out of that array by using the square brackets zero. 
and now I have an object um, with the count number, the value is 497. I can say dot count to get just the count out. Okay, so this can be a little tricky at first, but you're using some mixture of the dot notation when you're talking about objects and the square brackets when you're talking about arrays. Okay, so um, in my case, I'm doing exactly what we just walked through there, data.row0.count, to get the count out. And then I could console.log the count, just so we can see that the count is count. Um, I'm not sure what that exception was, um, but you can see the count is 497. That is what I was hoping for. Great. Um, so now when we add it to the inner HTML here, that's how we end up with it showing up here in the sidebar. And now that we um, have a way to get that data out of Cardo, we know that we can set it in the inner HTML as we do here, we could just as easily do this using mustache. We could create a mustache template. Please see the other video for, for how to do um, templating with mustache. But if we didn't want to build our HTML here in the JavaScript, we can absolutely combine this technique with mustache. Um, two quick things. Um, one is that fetch, while it is a standard that many modern browsers support, in order to support as many browsers as possible, I would recommend importing a couple of libraries here in your HTML. It's these two. So one is a polyfill for promises. One is a polyfill for fetch. And together, if you have these, you will be able to support older browsers such as Internet Explorer that you might otherwise let slide by. And um, let's try not to exclude people using Internet Explorer while we can. And the last thing while we're here is um, you can learn more about the SQL API here at this uh, Cardo documentation page. They have a couple of guides for using the SQL API. And if you need it, I don't think you will necessarily because it's it really is um, you add um, a an SQL statement to the end of the URL. The You add the SQL statement to the end of the URL, but you change your username. Mine is this. Yours will be something else. Um, but as long as you change the username, you um, shouldn't need to know too much more about the SQL API. Mostly just works.